I find the term settlement a little bit offensive because the connotation in English is that we're colonialists and it negates the fact that we have roots here or history here or a right to be here. Meaning when I think of the Dutch or the British in South Africa, those are settlers. We're a native people that was separated from our country or many of us were separated from our country and we've come back. It was called Luz originally and then later Betel. It's uh, famous in Jewish history because the Maccabees had their partisan camp there when they fought the Greeks. In fact, if we ever go to my town, I could show you where Yudha Maccabee was killed. Uh, but what's important to me about even the less believable stories is that the fact that our people has a story or a legend or a myth about almost every hill, mountain, and valley in this part of the country is already an indication that we're an indigenous people here. I mean, that's already a sign of indigeneity where you have a story to tell about almost every rock. Not only do I not feel like I should apologize for living in the heart of my historic country, I don't think me living in a place like Beit El A, infringes on the lives of Palestinians, or B, necessitates conflict between us. I think there are things that are infringing on the lives of Palestinians and necessitating conflict between us. But I don't think Jews living here is part of the problem. I think, in fact, the more Jews who live here, the more Jews will be able to interact with Palestinians in a normal way because we'll be living together, we'll be living in close proximity to one another. Uh, the problem is that while I think both people need to achieve uh, their people's aspirations, they can't do so in such a way that infringes on the other. And one of the problems I have is that although I think Zionism was very successful in terms of bringing a dead nation back to life, we're one of the only people, we're the only people I know of in history that was broken and scattered throughout the world, yet succeeded in reviving a dead language to everyday use, uh, in gathering exiles from around the world back to the homeland they were dispersed from, uh, liberating a country from the British Empire. I, I think that these are revolutionary achievements. The problem is that the Palestinians ended up with a short end of the stick. I would say that Israel's military occupation of the West Bank actually undermines the Jewish people's legitimate right to Judea and Samaria. Meaning the Jews in Judea are not the Americans in Afghanistan. The problem is we behave like the Americans in Afghanistan. Our policies reflect the policies of a Western power occupying a land that doesn't belong to us. Checkpoints, walls, restrictions on freedom of movement, the way Palestinians are treated reflects Israel behaving like something it's not. The Jewish people are an indigenous Middle Eastern people. Uh, many of us weren't here for a long time, and we were only not here because of an injustice that was perpetrated against us. When the Roman Empire invaded our country, destroyed our temple, uprooted us from our soil, exiled us from our land. Um, meaning I was born in New York, you know that, we've discussed it. And I was only born in New York because of a crime that was committed against my ancestors. And neither one of my parents were born in the United States, and neither one of my parents have grandparents who were born in the same countries that they were born in. Uh, meaning for about 2,000 years we were homeless. Uh, the last place we called home was Jerusalem. And me coming back here at 21 was really just trying to correct that injustice. What essentially happened to us is when the Romans occupied our country, we fought them, and they destroyed us. And as a result, what a lot of the, the leaders of our nation did was they transformed our national culture into a portable religion. It was only with uh, the rise of the Jewish Enlightenment, you know, specifically in Germany, but also in places like France and England, that Jews began to self-identify as Germans with a Jewish religion or Frenchmen with a Jewish religion. This idea that they're part of a nation uh, other than the Jewish nation. The part of a people other than the Jewish people and that they had a religion which was Jewish was very much the westernization of our culture. I am an alternative peace activist, meaning I work to bring Jews and Palestinians who live in this area together um, on a grassroots level. You know, it used to be much more normal for Palestinians and Jews to interact than it is today. And it's largely the result of policies that were pushed on both peoples from the outside. It was George Bush who forced us to abandon the Gaza region. Israel should have stayed there? I'm sorry? Israel should it's part have of my country. I, if anything, I think our occupation of Gaza began in 2005. Meaning prior to 2005, it was disputed territory, objectively. We considered it part of our homeland, and other people said it's not, right? In 2005, not only did the Sharon government forcibly expel all the Jews who had lived there and remove 
Israel's buses, postal service, military police from there. He also uh, officially um, uh, relinquished our claim to it, the Jewish people's claim on a national level to the territory. Yet he insisted, and our subsequent governments continue to exist, uh, insist that we have a right to control airspace, borders, shores, meaning that is occupation. I Meaning you can't claim it's not your country and then at the same time try to control everything about it. Either Gaza is part of our homeland and we should be able to live there, or it's not and we shouldn't have a say in what they do. Well, let, let's be honest. A lot of the Jewish building that goes on here is done because Jews are trying to resist what they perceive to be an injustice being perpetrated against them by the international community. That the international community insists that Israel partition this country into two states. Right? and that we lose what we consider the cradle of Jewish civilization. So Jews who go out and live in these places or try to build more communities in these places, a lot of these Jews are motivated uh, by an active sense of resisting what other people are trying to do to us or take from us. Okay? That's the perspective they're coming from. Ultimately, we're going to have one state here. I'm talking about a state in which both people feel they're getting what they want, what's central to them. Okay? Now I think what the Jewish people need to experience in order to feel that our aspirations are fulfilled is the return of Jewish independence to the country we were thrown out of, right? to what we always have considered to be our homeland. Right? We need to experience Jewish independence there. Uh, now what the Palestinians need from my conversations, from my experiences, what I believe the Palestinians need is to feel that they have full equality in a democratic state and a right of return. Should Jews be allowed to live in Shechem? Yeah, I do think so. But I also think Palestinians should be able to live in Tel Aviv. The idea that, um, that we should be concerned about how many of which baby is born uh, would be completely unacceptable in any discourse other than this one. And I only think it's acceptable in this discourse because it's used as a uh, scare tactic to encourage partition, which is the agenda of the Western powers in this region. Meaning if it wasn't serving American and European interests to push this fear of a demographic threat, I think the idea of a demographic threat would be considered a very racist idea, a very racist concern. And it is a very racist concern. We should have a country with equal rights for all citizens, regardless of whether they're Jewish or Arab, etc. Uh, we should make it clear that there is, whether you want to call it annexation or, or um, apply full Israeli sovereignty to all of the territories won in 1967 to say that this is part of our homeland. And part of our homeland means we have a responsibility to the people who live here. That means that the child in Shechem, Nablus, or the child in, in uh, Tulkarem should be getting uh, Israeli state education. He could get it in Arabic, but he should be getting, we have a responsibility to provide him with health care, education, roads, sanitation, etc. That we have to take responsibility. But I understand that the right of return and not the desire for a flag is central to Palestinian aspirations and grievances, meaning that what the Palestinians are more concerned with are things like recognition of the Nakba, um, the right of return. These are much more central to them than the idea of a state, especially a state that would essentially be an American-backed police state. I told you I support participatory democracy. I think that people, everybody should have the opportunity to participate in the political process on a weekly basis. Not uh, every four years you vote for the guy with the best hair and the most uh, campaign financing. I think that we should stop taking American money uh, and we should stop taking American weapons. I think we should be an independent country and we should try to establish much better relations with our neighbors. I think Israel is a Middle Eastern country that with a ruling class it's trying to be Western. And I think the ambitions of our ruling class to be part of the West is actually probably the largest barrier between us and our neighbors, the largest impediment to real peace. I think that the majority of Palestinians in this area, specifically in the mountains more than on the coast, uh, have Jewish ancestry. And I think we'd find that a lot of them are ethnically Jewish, or genetically Jewish. Right, there are Palestinians who have told me that they have a tradition that their family are really Jewish, or that they have customs which would indicate such, whether it's uh, mezuzot on doorposts, or uh, women lighting candles on Friday evenings, or wrapping uh, tefillin on, um, on people who are sick that there are traditions that many Palestinians have which would indicate that they have Jewish roots.
Well, first of all, I don't, I don't uh, really publicize that I believe most Palestinians are Jewish. I think that's something that comes up. And I don't believe we should be pushing an identity on Palestinians, just as I don't believe we should be deciding what policies our one state will be on our own. I think that any, any future state that we and the Palestinians share here will have to be built together. We'll have to come up with solutions jointly. Meaning real peace is people being able to live together. And uh, if you look at the policies of the last 20 years, like the Oslo Accords and all its derivatives, that's only segregated peoples, meaning Palestinians and Jews interact a lot less today than we did 20 years ago. So when people call me an alternative act uh, peace activist, they're doing so because I'm actually trying to bring people together rather than further separate them.